In this video, we're going to look at stem and leaf diagrams. I'm going to assume you can already calculate the averages and the range. If you want to revise that topic quickly first, you can find a link to my video on it in this video's description. Here we have some data. This could be, for example, the ages of some people attending a driving test centre on a particular day. To turn this into a stem and leaf diagram, we first of all need to draw out some lines that look like this. Usually in an exam, these will be drawn for you. Then we need to find the smallest number in the list, and I can see that's 17, and there are three of them. We then take the number 17 and split it into two parts. The part on the left hand side here is known as the stem. The part on the right hand side is the leaf. We then need to put this number into the diagram. All of the stems go to the left of the vertical line, in this region here. So we're going to place the stem of this number 1 right at the top here. We then place the leaves to the right hand side of the vertical line, so in this section here. We'll place the 7 in the same row as we place the 1 for the stem, so it goes here. So you can now read this number as 17. There were three number 17s though, so we need to put two more 7s into this row to represent all three of those 17s. So whenever we have a 7 in the row which has a stem of 1, it's going to represent 17. So all three of those 7s represent the number 17. Then we move on to the next smallest number. This one is 18, and there are also three of those. So if we're going to split the number 18, it will be 1 for the stem, and then 8 for the leaf. So this will go in the same row as the 17, because it has a stem of 1. So we just place an 8 here, and a second one, and a third one, to represent all three of the 18s. So each of those 8s represents 18, because it has a stem of 1, and a leaf of 8. Then we move on to the next number, and we have the number 19. So that's going to have a stem of 1 and a leaf of 9. So we just need to place two 9s into this row for the two 19s. The next smallest number we have is 20. This will have a stem of 2 and a leaf of 0. So it can no longer go into this same row. So we need to start a new row with a stem of 2. Then we place a 0 here to represent the number 20. The next smallest number we have is 21. So that'll be a stem of 2 and a leaf of 1. So we just place a 1 in this row. Then we have 22, so that's a stem of 2 and a leaf of 2, so a 2 goes into this row. Then 23, so that's a stem of 2 and a leaf of 3. Then 24, so a stem of 2 and a leaf of 4. 25 has a stem of 2 and a leaf of 5. 26 has a stem of 2 and a leaf of 6. And then we have 29, which has a stem of 2 and a leaf of 9. The next smallest number we have is 30 and 30 has a stem of 3 and a leaf of 0, so we need to start a new row with a stem of 3. Then we place a 0 in here to represent 30. Next we have the number 32, so that's a stem of 3 and a leaf of 2, so we'll place a 2 here. And that's all of the 30, so we move on to the next smallest number, which is 44. This has a stem of 4 and a leaf of 4, so we need to start a new row with stem of 4. And we place the 4 here to represent 44, and there's only one number left, which is 51, a stem of 5 and a leaf of 1. So we need to start a new row once again because we have a different stem of 5 and the leaf is 1. So we've now placed all of these numbers into the diagram. It's sometimes a good idea at this point just to count up how many leaves you have and check that matches how many numbers you had. It's really easy for a question like this to miss off one number. Finally, to complete the diagram, we need to add a key. A key helps anyone who looks at this diagram understand what the data is telling you. To complete the key, you need to pick one of the numbers from the diagram. I usually pick the smallest number, but it doesn't matter which one you pick. The smallest one was 17, so I'm going to write a 1 for the stem, then the vertical line, and then 7 for the leaf. And we're just going to say that this equals 17 years old, because this was the ages, remember, of people attending a driving test centre. So anyone who looks at this diagram will now understand that these are ages of people in years. Let's try a second diagram where things are slightly different. So imagine these are the heights of students in centimetres in a particular class. So we have the diagram, which looks like this, and we'll find the smallest number, which is 145. So when we take this number 145, we have to think carefully about how we're going to split it into its stem and leaf. Do we have 1 as the stem, and then 45 as the leaf? Or do we have 14 as the stem, and 5 as the leaf? Well it turns out we're actually going to use this second option here. A leaf should always be just one digit number, so you're never allowed two digits on the right hand side. So if we add this onto our diagram, we have 14 as the stem and 5 as the leaf. 
we'll find the next smallest number. So this will be 149. That has 14 as a stem as well, but 9 as a leaf. So let's place 9 in this row. Then we have 151, which will have 15 as a stem, and 1 is a leaf. Then 153, which has 15 as a stem as well, but 3 is a leaf. Then we have 155 twice. So in this row for 15 as a stem, we'll put two fives. And then we have 158, so we need an 8. And 159, so we need a 9. Then we move into the 160s, so we have 160, which will be 16 as a stem and 0 as a leaf. Then 162, 163, 166, 167, and that's the 160s done. So onto the 170s, we have 171 twice, so 17 as a stem, and then two ones for the leaves, and then finally 177. And finally, to complete this diagram, we're going to add the key. I'll pick the smallest number once again, so 145, which is 14 for the stem, then we have a vertical line, and then 5 for the leaf. And this represents 145 centimeters. Next we'll draw one more stem and leaf diagram with a slight difference. Here we have the men's 100 meter final times from the recent Olympics. You can see that each of these times has been given as a decimal and to two decimal places. Let's have a look at how we put this into our diagram. So we'll start with the lowest time, which was Noah Lyles who won the gold medal in a time of 9.79 seconds. Now you can't place the decimal point into the stem and leaf diagram. So when we take his time of 9.79, we're actually going to write it at first as 979. And we'll come back to the decimal in a moment. So when we split this number, remember, we need to have one number as the leaf. So that will be the 9 on the right hand side here. So the stem will be 97 and the leaf will be 9. So for the stem, 97 and the leaf, 9. Now, Kashane Thompson also got the same time of 9.79, so we'll put a second 9 into this row. So that's the first two times done. Then we'll move on to Fred Curley, who won the bronze medal in a time of 9.81, so we need a stem of 98 and a leaf of 1. Then we'll continue to move through the other times. So the next one is 9.82, so we need a stem of 98 and a leaf of 2. And onto the next one, we have 9.85, so in the stem of 98, a leaf of 5. Then we have 9.86, so also the stem of 98, a leaf of 6. And then 9.88, so also the stem of 98, a leaf of 8. And finally, 9.91, so this time we need a different stem, 99, and a leaf of 1. Now that we've entered all of the times, we need to add the key. So the key this time is particularly important because we need to make it clear that these times were actually decimals. It didn't take Noah Lyles 979 seconds to run the 100 meters. So we'll use his time of 9.79, and we wrote that as 97, then a vertical line, then a 9. But we're using the key to tell everybody that this actually represents 9.79 seconds. Sometimes a stem and leaf diagram might already be drawn for you. For example, this one here might represent the test scores of some students. And we have a key that tells us that 6, with a line, then a 5, represents 65%. The exam question may then ask you some questions about this stem and leaf diagram. Let's have a look at some examples of what you could be asked. First of all, work out the range of the scores. The range is the bigger score, subtract the smaller score. We find the bigger score in the bottom right of the diagram. This 5 here represents 95%. That's the best score. Then we find the lower score in the top left of the diagram. So that's this 5 here, representing 65%. So to do the range, we do the bigger score, 95, subtract the smaller score, 65, which gives you a range of 30%. They could also ask you to work out the mode of the scores. Now when you find the mode, lots of people make a mistake. They know the mode is the most frequent, so they look at the leaves and find the most frequently occurring number. You can see the number 5 here appears quite a few times. In fact, it appears 5 times, more than any other leaf. However, these 5s don't all represent the same number. This 5 here represents 65%. These 5s represent 85%. And these 5s here represent 95%. So even though we see 5 lots of times, it's not actually the mode. To find the mode, we're looking for the number that appears the most times, but in a given row. So, these 3s here all represent the same number because they're in the same row. They're all 73%, and that's actually the mode for this question. You could also be asked to work out the median. The median is the middle number when they're in order. Fortunately, a stem and leaf diagram is already in order, so we just need to find the middle. 
We do this by crossing off the leaves in pairs until we find the middle one. So we'll start with the biggest one, which is 95, and cross off the smallest one, 65. And we must do this in pairs. So the next biggest and smallest are 95 and 67. Then we have 91 and 69. Then 86 with 72. 85 with 73. Another 85 with another 73. Then 80 with 73 again. And we're left with the middle one, which is this one here, which represents 78. Another common mistake is some people just write down the leaf. For example, they might just write 8 rather than 78. But it's important to remember that each of those leaves represents a full number. Let's have a look at one more question that you could be asked. A student is selected at random. Work out the probability that they scored more than 75%. So we're going to look at all of these leaves here and count up how many students scored more than 75%. Well, in the 70s, there's only one, this person here, who scored 78. All of the people in the 80s must have scored more than 75, and all of those in the 90s. If you count up all of those leaves, you'll find there are eight of them. So we'll write down eight. But then we need to write this as a probability, so it needs to be out of the total. So if we count up all of the remaining leaves, we were on eight. So we have nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So there must have been 15 students who sat this test. So the probability is eight out of 15. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and why not try the exam questions in this video's description.